Probably the biggest single issue facing the world today is the issue of conservation. Not so much convincing people anymore that we need to conserve our precious plants and animals, but rather trying to find out how we actually do it. And should we just sit back and never farm or kill an animal? Or is there a better way to do it that the rest of the world is looking at? Well, for the answer to that, it's over to Dr. Graham Webb, who is one of the world leaders of sustainable use of wildlife. Graham, obviously a lot of people would simply be horrified at the thought of farming wildlife. You're right, they are. A lot of, a lot of people are frightened of farming wildlife, but um, there's lots of others that in fact see it as a perfectly legitimate way of proceeding. Does the farming inevitably lead to reduction of numbers of animals in the wild? No, no. The problem in this really is the way it's presented to the public is a simple thing. The, if you have a population of a thousand something or others in the field, then and it's full, then there's no room for any anyone else. There can only be a thousand. So that all the others die that are produced. So some something happens to them. They obviously there's no room for them. Otherwise the world would be full of sea turtles and black cockatoos. So that boy, there's a whole theory and practice of, of if you start to take animals, you know, they're just replaced. If you take too many, of course you cause a problem. But there's certainly uh, a number that you can take without any problems at all and if you can use that number to generate economic benefits for the landowner then the landowner sees the animals as something valuable and he'll look after them. If you don't do that he'll chop the trees down and grow wheat or do whatever else we do in Australia. Animals in this country are dying because of non-use because they have no use. It's not the problem of using in conservation, it's the problem of non-use. They have no use, they have no value, and so they've been obliterated. And the rest of the world understands this very, very clearly. But in Australia, we still have problems because of the number of people that live in the cities and just really don't understand what, you know, what wildlife is really all about. All right. The cockatoos, they're in reasonable numbers up here? Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the cockatoos are not a problem up here. If anything, at times, they're an agricultural pest. So the, the, the cockatoos represent another animal that, that uh, the government's been looking at, at uh, being able to use in a way that gives benefits back to the landowners. People have got to understand that in the, in the wild, animals are dying every day. National parks are killing fields. Everyone's killing everything. If the killing stopped for one day, the whole ecological system would collapse. We've got this crazy idea about killing, you know, because if people ask us to kill someone else, you know, well, problem, problem area, we've got to hate them. But in the animal world, killing is part of it. I mean, if you think you can have an animal world without killing, tell me how. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> Obviously, the main use, if they're being farmed, is, is in captivity, and a lot of people would say a captive bird is a miserable bird, it would be better off being dead. Yeah, but why do they say that? Well, I mean, I, see, this... Unfortunately, this stuff is an enormous amount of ignorance around. Look, the reality is that the probability of an animal surviving in the wild is not that great. Otherwise, the world would be full of black cockatoos. So you know they're going to die. Something's going to get them, either when they're babies or when they're young. Now, who decides that a bird is not happy in a cage when it's been, especially if it's been hand-raised, it's being fed every day, it's, you know what I mean? Who decides they're not happy? What's the story about, about this little bloke, Graham? Right? Well, they're here mainly here so that we can use them for people to see and touch and, and uh, tell the story of sustainable use. Right. You know, because it's a difficult story to tell to people. And so they can see the animals and then, then you can explain it to them as to what the Territory is trying to do. And, and, you know, what better way of endearing people to wildlife than, than to have kids grow up with something like this as a pet? I mean, how people can be opposed to this type of thing, I, I just lose me cold. But, but, you know, that if you want people to really love animals, they're going to have to be with them all the time. This idea of hands-off approach and put them on some religious pedestal is just such damn nonsense. He looks unhappy to you? No, not at all. <laughs> What's the basis of the experiment you're doing, Peter? The basis is to see if we can actually breed commercial quantities of black cockatoos harvested from the wild. We went out and we took birds from an area where they were giving a problem to uh, landowners 
put them into captivity um, and basically experimented to see if we could breed those birds. We've got probably 30 to 40 breeding pairs of birds and um, they are successfully breeding. I suppose a lot of people look at the cages and say they, they look a bit ghastly and bare. They're like that for a reason. They're uh, reasonably sterile for disease problems, to prevent disease problems. Um, we never go into those cages. That's again to uh, give the birds some sort of security in those cages. Uh, it works quite well. As you can see, they're not, uh, not too disturbed with us being here. The condition of these birds when we, ca when we caught them was quite poor. You know, they, were, they were surviving on a man-made crop. On a, uh, they weren't utilising a natural food source. There was probably too many in the area to actually utilise their the native food sources. What were they eating? They were eating rice. And, um, you know, if anyone knows anything about birds, rice is not a sustainable sort of diet for a cockatoo. Yeah. The feather condition was bad. They all had worms, quite bad tapeworms and so on like that, which is not very pleasant. But, uh, you know, they weren't in very good condition at all. Where they're in pest proportions up here, are farmers allowed to shoot them and do they shoot them? Um, they're probably not allowed to shoot them. No, I don't think anyone's been given a permit to shoot black cockatoos. Um, I know for a fact that they shoot towards black cockatoos from time to time, uh, maybe hitting some. Um, but that's the sort of thing that's happening. I mean, it, it basically happens everywhere. Western Australia, I know the permits are given to shoot black cockatoos. Um, you know, it tends to be a bit of a waste. You cut down the trees and then you shoot the black cockatoos to try and make money off the land. And that's the sort of things that we're trying to prevent with these sort of programs. Now, if you're still ill at ease about the idea of farming wildlife, just have a look around me here. This is, I suppose, the end result of one of the effects of not allowing people to farm wildlife. In other words, if you could harvest cockatoos from an area like this, just a small number each year so that the wild population remained at a good healthy level, they're valuable and you can keep the trees on this property. If you can't sell off any of those birds then all you can do is clear the land, put in wheat or whatever the other crop might be and then possibly a breeding territory for these wonderful creatures is gone forever. And if enough farmers do that, the end result is, of course, whatever the form of wildlife is, it's going to be extinct sooner or later. So we in Australia seriously need to rethink our attitude to conservation. Conservation in the future almost certainly will entail people managing wildlife, using some of them and protecting others. It's a very important marriage that is essential if they're going to survive. And surely anything is better than flames, bare earth, and bulldozers.